So, let us uh, begin with uh, today's lecture that is going to be on integrals of functions of several variables. So, let us look at uh, the problem f is a function defined on a domain d in R 2 to R and we should assume that d is a closed bounded domain is a closed bounded set. It is something similar to for a function of one variable, the domain was a closed bounded interval okay. and we will assume f is uh, bounded is not necessary one can okay. right. So, the problem that we want to talk about is, uh, so the uh, problem is in one variable we looked at the notion of area below the graph of a function. So, the graph of uh, this function f is a surface. So, what is that surface? So, graph of f is a surface which is x y f of x y, x y belonging to the domain d. So, this is a surface in R 3 right. The graph of a function of two variables is a surface in R 3. Let us draw a picture of that, so that we sort of understand a bit. So, here is the domain. So, this is x, this is y and this is z. So, this is the domain of the function and in every point here x, y, the function value is some height. So, let us, so this is f of x, y. So, that is equal to z. So, all uh, for every point we look at uh, the height that is the value of the function. So, that gives us uh, so, you kind of I should so, that is a kind of surface. Right. So, this is uh, the graph of the function f, the surface. So, what do we want to do? We want to look at uh, the sort of the region below uh, the graph of this function above the domain d. Right. So, that is in a sense uh, you can think of it as a volume of the solid bounded below by the domain d top by the surface s. So, you can uh, imagine that to be like this, right. So, it is a solid uh, with domain D as the base and top uh, is the surface that is the graph of the function. What is the volume of this solid? That is what we want to give a meaning to, right. So, the idea is very much similar to that of uh, one variable where what did we do? We try to fit in rectilinear figures below the graph of the function in the required area. Right? So, here this being three dimensional, we will try to fit in parallelopipeds inside this region right below the graph. So, how does it one do that? So, you can imagine, so you can draw lines parallel. So, you can uh, you can draw lines parallel to the axis and so that is a partition kind of thing you are thinking of. So, for every, uh, so let us look at a particular uh, rectangle say 
for example, this is a rectangle okay, which is completely inside. So, that is the base, we will take a, this as the base and try to raise it to the height of the function. So, let us raise it to the height of the function. So, that will look like go up. So, that will give you some kind of a right. So, that will be uh, you can think of this as okay. Mm. So, it is a kind of a parallelopipped with base as this rectangle and height being. So, what should be the height of this? So, let us take a point inside this like very much similar to take a point and take this as the height. So, a point is chosen. So, if you recall uh, in the Riemann sums, we defined S p f to be equal to sigma f of c i x i minus x i minus 1, right. So, that was the area of a rectangle uh, with length as x i minus 1 to x i and height as some point in that interval with that as the height. So, same thing we are trying to repeat. So, uh, the main being two dimensional, we cut it up into small pieces, the rectangular pieces. So, this is a, a typical rectangular piece, right. So, let us say this length is delta x and this uh, length is delta y, okay. So, this is the base area is delta x, delta y. So, delta x, delta y, that is the area of the base and height is take any point in that and take as the height. So, let us take f of some point. So, let us write uh, x 0, okay, does not make. So, let us write x y itself and then summation of over all the rectangles which are inside the domain. Right. So, perfectly similar to the one variable thing, we are trying to copy that. So, uh, what we are saying is divide uh, the plane x y plane into rectangles of lengths delta x delta y, right. So, partition it, look at a typical rectangle inside the domain D, right, and erect a parallelopipped over that as the base, and with the uh, so height will be choose any point in between. So, the height of uh, that parallelopipped is the value of the function at that point. So, that is z is equal to. So, that is the volume of the parallelopip and sum it over all possible parallelopips that will give you approximate value for the uh, volume, right. So, what should be uh, our definition of the volume? So, limit of this summation f x y delta x delta y okay, and limit delta x delta y that should go to 0 0 right. The length of the partition should become smaller and smaller. That means, the length of the rectangle as well as the uh, width of the rectangle should go to 0. So, if this exists if this limit exists perfectly similar to one variable, if the limit of the Riemann sums exists that is called the integral. So, if this limit exists, uh, exists we say f as double integral over the domain D denoted by, so that is denoted by two integral signs because it is a two variable d is the domain f of x y d x d y. So, what is this? This is a limit of delta x delta y going to 0 0 of those sums sigma f of x y delta x and delta y summation over those partitions. Uh, just uh, to point out why will this sum exist? 
this sum will exist because our domain D is a closed bounded interval. So, only finite number of rectangles will be covering it. Is it okay? Because closed bounded is compact. So, all these small rectangles cover it. So, by compactness finite number of them will always cover it. Right? So, D will be covered by finitely many. So, this is a finite sum only of those rectangles which are completely inside okay, from there. So, limit of this if it exists it is called the double integral of f. So, we will not go into uh, uh, proving many things, uh, idea is how to compute these things. So, let us write theorems which uh, sort of properties of this. If f is continuous for a continuous function double integral always exists. exists. Uh, one thing more I should point out this sometimes you write dx dy or sometimes you write dx y. So, both are followed. Okay. Both notations are followed. So, sometimes. So, if a function is continuous this always exists. Let us uh, write something more. Uh, it is a linear function if uh, f g integrable over a domain d. So, all those properties are very much uh, there which are for one variable then f plus g is also integrable and integral double integral over d of f of f plus g x y let me write d x y is equal to double integral of f plus linearity property. Basically, what we are saying is integral like in one variable it is linear. And actually you can uh, if you like you can generalize more f and g integrable alpha beta real numbers you can take a linear combination alpha f plus beta g that also is integrable. So, then uh, it will be alpha f. So, let me just write that also so, why to repeat alpha f plus beta g. So, that is equal to alpha times this and beta times this and scalar comes out from the integral. Okay. Actually, uh, because it, we are defined it as a limit, so that is not very difficult to see because if alpha is multiplied in that sum, then alpha will come out, right? So that will be alpha times the limit. So these are easy to verify, but we don't go into the proofs of uh, these two. Let me write one more so that uh, we don't have to write again and again. So third. Right. Um, suppose uh, if you recall in one variable supposing a function is integrable over a uh, domain a b, over a interval a b and you cut it into two parts a to c and c to b then it is also integrable over the sub intervals and the integrals add up to give you the integral over the big interval. So, similarly here if d is equal to d 1 union d 2 where d 1 d 2 do not overlap. So, one has to intuitively understand what is when not overlap. We are not saying they are disjoint, but there is no common portion of them. right? So, if it is d you can cut it into two parts d 1 and d 2 then d 1 and d 2 do not overlap. Right? So, thou it is written as a set theoretic union, we are emphasizing the rule. For example, if you have something like this and this is d 1 and you take this portion as d 2, then they overlap. right? So, that kind of thing is not allowed. The only thing common is the boundary points kind of thing. So, intuitively understand if they overlap, do not overlap and d is cut into two parts, then integral of f 
over d is same as integral over d1 plus integral over d2 f of x y. So, it is like <coughs> the if the domain is cut up into two parts which do not overlap then the integrals add up. Okay. I think more or less these are good enough for properties. One can write more, uh, for let me write one more so that it looks very much uh, f integrable on d then mod f is also integrable on d and f x y d x y that is a number. So, take absolute value of that that is less than or equal to the double integral of mod f x y d x y. We have stated all these properties for uh, integrals of one variable also. So, the same properties hold and we we shall not in total they are quite ok right will not uh, prove all these properties, okay. but we will use them to when we come to computing these integrals. So, uh, the basic problem that we want to uh, intuitively uh, integral is the volume below the graph of a function for two variable. The problem is how does one compute this integral? How does one compute the integral of a integrable function? Right. Um, if you recall for one variable most or almost uh, all computations of integral are given by the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you know that the function integrand has a antiderivative right, then you can compute directly the integral right, by looking at the values at the end points. Here what we want to do is and if you recall we had tried to for functions of two variables, we have tried to shift the problem from two variables to one variable and analyze the problem there. So, here also we would like that to uh, for a function of two variables which is integrable, we would like some tool which help us to integrate this by using integration of functions of one variable. So, given a function of two variable, if I fix one variable, right, then it becomes a function of one variable. So, can that be used to integrate the function of two variable. So, that is a important uh, result. So, for that let me introduce something uh, that depends on the nature of the domain. So, let us write uh, what are called special domains. I think it is good to categorize them. So, let us domains of type 1. What is domain of type 1? So, this is a subset of R 2 of course. The domain looks like all x y such that x lies between some numbers a and b and y lies between a function. So, let us call it as uh, psi x and say eta x. We have for some uh, we can say continuous functions psi x and eta x. Uh, let us uh, uh, try to visualize this what uh, what I am saying. So, uh, this is a part of the domain. So, let us look at. So, this is y and this is x. So, when I want to say that this is all set of all ordered pairs x comma y where x lies between a and b. So, there is a bound for x right. So, that so let us uh, understand that. So, here is the say line 
A and here is a line B. So, domain is in between these two lines, right. And what are the so x is somewhere in between? So, here is a uh, point somewhere in between x, right. For that point, where does y lie? y lies between some function of x of that point to some other function of x. So, let us uh, let me uh, try to draw uh, and then uh, illustrate. So, it is like So, this is what my domain looks like. So, so this is my domain, the domain looks like this. Okay. So, it is bounded by x between a and b, right. And for every x between a and b, where does the y variable go? It starts here and goes up to. So, this is y coordinate to be inside the domain, right. So, the top one is a function of uh, eta x. So, this top is eta x and the bottom one is uh, psi of x, right. So, for every point whatever point you choose say point x is here, right. If you draw how much is the y coordinate varying for a point x inside a b, so that you are in the domain. So, go a vertical line, you want to know the y coordinate how much it is. So, as soon as you start, so from this point you go up to this point, right. So, that is the y coordinate. So, all these points on this line are inside the domain. So, we are describing the domain. What are points in the domain? x should lie between a and b and for every x the y lies between some function of psi x and some function of eta x. So, such domains are called domains of type 1. So, let me give some more special examples particular cases of this. So, let us look at uh, particular cases of this. So, let us look at uh, right. So, let me look at uh, the domain D which is uh, let me write it in words and then describe it. Uh, this is uh, ok upper part of circular disk centered at 0 0 and some radius at zero end of radius 1 right. So, it is a what is inside a disk of upper part of the circular disk centered at 0 0. So, what does this look like? So, this looks like radius is 1. So, minus 1 to plus 1 this is 1. So, it is this part of the very bad circle, but it is ok. Right? So, this is the domain we are looking at. What does the domain lie between? Can I say the domain D, this domain D is all points x and y such that x lies between some limits. So, x lies between minus 1 and 1 right. If x is outside this then no vertical line is going to intersect the domain right and for any such point inside x to be inside the domain I draw the vertical line. So, this is this is going to start at the x axis 
and going up to the boundary of the circular disc. So, what is where does it start? Starts on x axis. So, y lies between 0, right, and where does it go? This part. So, what is the equation of this part? That is y is equal to square root of 1 minus x square. Equation of the circle is x square plus y square equal to 1. We want to interpret y in terms of x. So, y square is equal to 1 minus x square, but the upper part of the circle. So, y is equal to positive square root of 1 minus x square, right. So, it less than square root of 1 minus x square. So, its domain I can describe it as this, right. So, D is of type 1, it is ok. What about if I take the full uh, disk, is it of type 1? Can I say I have taken the half disk, so let us take the full circular disk. So, so geometrically that will be we take this disk. So minus one plus one minus one plus one and minus one. So inside of that, right? So is this the whole disk type one? Let us try. It lies between two lines again, right? It lies between two lines that is x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 1, right? So, d is equal to x y say that minus 1 less than x less than or equal to 1. Where does y? So, take a point x, draw a vertical line and see how much it varies. right so that goes between lower part of the circle so what is the equation of the lower part so that is minus 1 minus y square uh, x square less than or equal to 1 minus x square right so this part is 1 minus x square so with a negative sign because it is below and this is with a positive sign square root of 1 minus x square. So, this is my uh, that function uh, psi x and this is my function eta x right? right. So, let us look at one or two more so that. So, let us look at one more. Let me just draw. Okay, so let us look at uh, so this is a domain. I should tell what is what. So this is zero. And let us call it as two. And let us call it as one. Right. So, what is this domain D? Can I say it is x y such that x lies between something, x lies between 0 and 2. So, 0 and 2. So, here is 0, here is 2. So, it lies between these two and for every point x in between 0 and 2, where does y lie? So, it starts here and goes up to here. So, we have to know, we have to find out what is the equation of this line. So, what is the equation of this line? x is equal to x is equal to y. What is this point? This point is 0, 0. So, what is the equation of this line? It is not y equal to x, it is 
yes y equal to 2x no x y 2 so be careful okay so this equation is y is equal to because when x is equal to 2 y is equal to 1 okay so this goes up to 1 and starts at y equal to x by 2. So, that is my domain clear it starts at this line and that line is y equal to x by 2 goes up to the line y equal to 1 okay right. So, that is the domain so this this d is of type 1 right. Let me uh, do one more. So here is two, here is one, and uh, here is two. So the domain is. This point is one two. It's clear this is of type one. Yes, x lies between zero and two. Okay, and so this is oh, well twice two. And for any point in between x, you start at this line and go up to this line, right. So, the lower limit for y is the line joining 0, 0 with 1, 2, and upper limit is the line joining with 0, 2, and so you have to find those equations and write down. Let me along with it draw another one. So, let us look at uh, a variation of this. So, let us look at this minus 1 plus 1 and this is 1. So, that is a domain. So, can you say that this domain is of type 1? Again, x lies between right. So, x lies between minus 1 and 1. Now, if you take a point x in between it starts at 0 and goes up to this line right. But if I take a point x here then it does not go to the same line right. It goes to some different limit. So, for same x I cannot say the lower limit and the upper limits remain same wherever with the point B, right? The function changes. So, this is not a domain of type 1. Is it clear? This is so this domain not this is not of type 1 because I cannot write it as all points x, comma y so that x lies between some limit and y lies between some function of x lower limit bounded by some upper limit of a function of x. The functions change right. If I like I can cut it into two parts. I can cut this domain right. I can call the left side this part as d 1 okay. and let us uh, So, let us call this part as d 1 and this part as d 2 because y axis is the line which is changing the nature of the value of y right. So, then I can write it as d as d 1 union d 2 
right they are non overlapping intervals and each is of type 1 because on the d1 it goes from up to here okay so this is a limit and for d2 the limit is this line it x goes from here to the upper one the equations can be written down is it clear to everybody the domain is not of type d1 uh, type 1 but i can cut it up into two parts say so that their union is of union is the whole domain and each is of type 1 so some so that will be useful when we want to compute things right